This is from Lilith by George MacDonald. I bethought me that a bird capable of addressing a man must have the right of a man to a civil answer, perhaps as a bird even a greater claim. A tendency to croak caused a certain roughness in his speech, but his voice was not disagreeable, and what he said, although conveying little enlightenment, did not sound rude. I did not come through any door, I rejoined. I saw you come through it. Saw you with my own ancient eyes, asserted the raven, positively, but not disrespectfully. I never saw any door, I persisted. Of course not, he returned. All the doors you had yet seen, and you haven't seen many, were doors in. Here you came upon a door out. The strange thing to you, he went on thoughtfully, will be that the more doors you go out of, the farther you get in. Oblige me by telling me where I am. That is impossible. You know nothing about awareness. The only way to come to know where you are is to begin to make yourself at home. How am I to begin that where everything is so strange? By doing something. What? Anything, and the sooner you begin, the better. This is from A Spiritual Canticle by St. John of the Cross. Oh, who can heal me? Give me at once yourself. Send me no more a messenger who cannot tell me what I wish. All they who serve are telling me of your outnumbered graces, and all wound me more and more, and something leaves me dying. I know not what of which they are darkly speaking. But how you persevere, O oh life, not living where you live, the arrows bring death which you receive from your conceptions of the Beloved. Why, after wounding this heart, have you not healed it? And why, after stealing it, have you thus abandoned it and not carried away the stolen prey? Quench my troubles, for no one else can soothe them, and let my eyes behold you, for you are their light, and I will keep them for you alone. Reveal your presence, and let the vision and your beauty kill me. Behold, the malady of love is incurable except in your presence and before your face. O oh, crystal well, O oh, that on your silvered surface you would mirror forth at once those eyes desired which are outlined in my heart. Turn them away, O oh, my beloved. I am on the wing. This is from The Person and Work of the Holy Spirit by R. A. Torrey. Before one can correctly understand the work of the Holy Spirit, he must first of all know the Spirit Himself. A frequent source of error and fanaticism about the work of the Holy Spirit is the attempt to study and understand His work without first of all coming to know Him as a person. It is of the highest importance, from the standpoint of worship, that we decide whether the Holy Spirit is a divine person, worthy to receive our adoration, our faith, our love, and our entire surrender to Himself, or whether it is simply an influence emanating from God, or a power or an illumination that God imparts to us. If the Holy Spirit is a person, and a divine person, and we do not know Him as such, then we are robbing a divine being of the worship and the faith and the love and the surrender to himself which are his due. It is also of the highest importance from the practical standpoint that we decide whether the Holy Spirit is merely some mysterious and wonderful power that we in our weakness and ignorance are somehow to get hold of and use, or whether the Holy Spirit is a real person, infinitely holy, infinitely wise, infinitely mighty, and infinitely tender, who is to get hold of and use us.